Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by GBM's Izzy Asif and Adam Smith. How are you both doing? Yes, good, thank you. Very thank good. You. Enjoying being in Sheffield, Izzy's home city and uh, one I know well. Love love it here. Boxing through and through. So, yeah, excited to be, uh, to be here and a few days away from another big show. And it's really exciting times for GBM as a whole. This year, 2024, has started off in incredible fashion and you're certainly making waves in the boxing world at the moment. How has it been sort of being in that position as it has previously and you've got all this attention on your shows at the moment? Josh, you know, it's something I've been saying for a few years. So to other people's, in my, other people's kind of opinion and outlook might be a surprise, but I've already kind of manifested this and, you know, I'm big on manifestation and believing and having faith and I already know we're going to be at this stage and, and not coming across arrogant, but I believe we belong up there with, with the top promoters in the country and putting the best shows on in the country. So for me, it's just going through the kind of process and stages. But on, on, the, on the switch of it, yeah, of course, extremely proud that we've built such a reputation where fighters and media and people want to know about us and be a part of us. And then obviously signing the man to my right, Adam Smith, was a massive move for us, which happened just by... A bit of a conversation, weren't it? A bit of, mm -hmm. bit of, I call it audacity. Is his audacity? And I just, <laughs> I just believe. Listen, in life, you've got to take opportunities and you've got to sense situations, and and that's what I do with most things in my life and any deals I'm doing. And I felt like when I met Adam, I, the energy kind of gravitated to it towards me, and I felt like Adam Smith's going to be GB. And instantly, when I spoke to Adam, he doesn't know this, but I instantly knew that Adam will be working with us and be part of us. And and look, it's going to be a great relationship. It, it, it fits in perfectly to our team. It's what we kind of, I say, the final piece of jigsaw. We've got a lot of youth, got a lot of like young, hungry, driven, creative team. But then we've got experience. The man who's been right to the top, been in it for 30 years, and the best promotions in the world. So it, it's a massive addition to it. And GBM just now got the kind of final piece, and we're really going to let loose this, this year and next 18 months, and we're going to take it to another whole different level. It was Izzy's charm, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Normally gets me in trouble, but <laughs> you'll be all right this time. From from that first conversation with Izzy Adam, was it very much a, a simple uh, decision for yourself to get involved in these shows? Yeah, I mean, I uh, I've known Izzy a while. Um, obviously, big links with Sheffield, especially with Johnny Nelson, and uh, had a fantastic time. Uh, at Sky, especially with, with these Sheffield shows. And so, yeah, I kept an eye on Izzy for a while. Obviously, I've been ill for a long time. And um, I was, we were doing a, a sort of tribute night to Johnny, really, for his MBE and launching his foundation. And Izzy and I were both there. And he just said, do you want to come and see my show and maybe even commentate on it? And, and I thought, you know, I hadn't commentated for a while. I'd been recovering from cancer. And I thought it was very nice of him to ask. Um, I was very privileged. And... Uh, and it was a chance for me to go and um, have a little spy on what I'd heard about. And that was that the GBM shows are different. That they are high production, they're atmospheric, they're 50-50 uh, fights. There's all sorts happening through the night and everyone goes home happy. So I was really looking forward to it. And I went along and uh, the Sheffield show that uh, Shaq Thompson was uh, involved in as well, looked really good on. And it was a fantastic night and I just loved it. I loved being back behind the mic. And I love the GBM feel. That was it, I think. It's the, the staff, the, the, the passion, the, uh, the charisma, the ambition, all of that. And the professionalism as well of uh, the way the show was, uh, was put together. So, yeah, we had a, a few chats. And um, I think I've always wanted to get into the promotional side. I've, I've obviously been on the broadcasting side for, for a long, long time, forever. I've worked with the likes of, of, of Frank Warren, George Warren, um, Eddie and, and Barry, obviously, the, the Sourlands, Ben Shalom, the, everybody in, in promotional terms, even sort of Bob Arum and, and Top Rank and Don King and, you know, you name it. So I've sort of seen Frank Maloney, Ricky Hassan back in the day and Mick Hennessy. And I think I've seen them all. And, um, yeah, there's something I really liked about Izzy from the off. Um, he's got an, an infectious charisma. Um, he's very driven. Um, uh, he speaks well and he's real. He was a fighter, so he knows what fighters want. He wants this to be a big success. He looks up to the likes of, of Eddie and Frank, and I think that's great. And uh, I wanted a new challenge. So for me, um, a young, thriving, hungry company uh, who are gaining momentum and now going to be delivering shows up and down the country, that's what you want to get behind. And 
I guess it's for me, it's a, maybe a bit of advice or some knowledge I can I can pass down to, to Izzy. Uh, me and my friends at Matchroom and at Queensbury, they're all flying, right? And Izzy wants to get to that level and he wants to be a massive promotional force in his own right. So uh, let's try and help him uh, achieve his, uh, his ambition and dream. Adam talks about it there, Izzy, about wanting the progression, having those big dreams to be on the levels of a, a Matchroom or a Queensbury. Is at the moment, you've got in terms of broadcaster, you're obviously with with talk sport streaming there, but for, for yourselves, is it getting to that TV level? Is that something that's in your mind? Of course, listen, it's a tough business. As a promoter, there's only so much you can do without a big broadcasting backing, but we're not rushing it, you know, we're not we're not in no urge. We are we all we want it, yeah, but we're gonna do it at the right time for us. And of course it's something that you want. You want you can't reach the goals and the heights that I want to get to without having a big broadcaster backing you. But I believe that'll happen. I believe it'll happen at the right time when, we, when our fighters' roster is going to increase. We'll fight, sign bigger fighters and bigger names. That's going to happen. And some of these guys like your Shaquille Thompson and Kieran Malloy and Tina Bradley and Harvey Lambert and Arlo Stevens, they'll be up there with the bigger names of the country and, you know, cream of the crop of British boxing. And that's when, when the broadcast will come. But there's no rush, obviously. We've got Adam with experience. We've got other members of our team. We've got immense experience in the game. And, yeah, it's something we want. But at the same time, I don't want to be getting... Look, we're, we're, we're already in talks and there's been interest in, in different broadcasters here and abroad. But for me, it's got to be at the right time for us. We've got to be ready to deliver. We've got to be ready for everything because it's a big commitment, a lot of pressure with it. So... We, we, you know, we're not, we're not far, but there's no urgent rush. But of course, yeah, I want to be, I want to be the best. I want to be one of the best promotional outfits in the country, and that can only happen with a big broadcaster with you as well. And it's happened very quickly, the GBM rise. So I said to Izzy that you know each each show has got to improve. Um, learn from your mistakes. Go again. Uh, look for different angles. You know what's going to really appeal both to the fan at the arena and also back home watching on YouTube on TalkSport as it is or whether it's another broadcaster or however it is you've got to have that experience so get the product right and then I think when that is I think um, people will be knocking our way yeah. rather than the other way around so I think it is a, a learning process it's a, it's a uh, something that just won't come overnight, won't come immediately like that. I mean, Ben got lucky, didn't he, with, with Sky? And, and that was a fantastic deal for him. Youngest promoter in Britain, getting the keys to Sky and the platform. And he's done brilliantly. You know, I was there the other night at the Fabio Wardley uh, Fraser Clark fight, one of the great domestic heavyweight fights I've ever seen. And it's fantastic to see how far he's come. You've seen the Salons on, on Channel 5. You've seen what Eddie's done with, with the zone and, and Queensbury with TNT. You know, they've they've all they've all got accomplished deals and, and and they've done very well with them but i think as far as we're concerned it's about concentrating on gbm or concentrating on what we do each show that we deliver make sure that we we get that momentum that we're continuing to to climb up the hill rather than sort of get backtracked and people want to join the story it's a bit like rocky isn't it when everybody starts sort of following rocky it's it's that it's that's what the fighters are doing that's what i see yeah. Huey Fury on this on this bill and, and signing the likes of your Nile Berries or Kieran Malloy who's, who's on this Tina as well Bradley. I think Tim Bradley but uh, Harvey Lambert the list goes on yeah, and absolutely on and on. Arlo Stevens I think it's a really really um, fascinating and interesting time because GBM look like that on the way up it's uh, it's an ascent and I certainly chose to be part of that because I believe in Izzy I believe that he really wants this. I believe he's got the the tools to to make it. I think he's got the quality. Um, there's just a, a little bit of experience and you know guidance, and there's a lot of potholes and there's a lot of chess moves that lie ahead. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to try and help him as best I can. Adam mentioned a couple of the fighters on the upcoming card, some real notable names, the likes of Kieran Malloy, Tiernan Bradley, but. Huey Fury, former world title challenger on the card. How much of a coup is is that to get Huey on the card? Oh, it's, it's a massive name, you know. Huey, obviously, with the Fury brand he brings, and it's a massive name. He's fought, he, like we were talking earlier on, he's only lost to the top in the world. He, he's been with you, like your Povetkins, your your Joe uh, Parkers. He's been with them, well, he's, and he's only lost right at the top. And he's only young as well, Huey Fury. He's a 29 year old. I feel like he's been around for 
20 years. He hasn't. He's, what, 10, 11 years? So he really, you look back, he's been chucked in quite deep at a young age for heavyweight. And, and I, I think, think... I think he won gold at the World Youth back in 2012. I mean, he was fighting Joseph Parker when he was in his early 20s. And so then Pulev and then Povetkin. Yeah, Povetkin, I mean, yeah, yeah. I remember it's it. crazy, so really. He's young, he's young, but having him at this stage when we're trying to grow our brand... And, and obviously, every time we put a card together, you've got to be really tactful. It's not always about ticket sales. It's, you know, what kind of numbers and eyes he brings to show. And Huey Fury is one of them names. It's benefited us, obviously, to have a huge name on. But it's also benefited Huey to get back in action and, and also being on a platform that you know he's going to... He's not going to feel like undersold anything. When he comes on a GBM show, he's going to know he's on a proper production, proper outfit, a proper promotion. That's important. And I think with GBM as well, there's that mixture. There's the young, exciting prospects, the 50-50 fights. There's the women on. There's the men. There's the different ages, experiences. Yeah. Some that have lost who are coming back. I think there's that's what it is. It's There's always got to be stories and attraction for the fans, and not just the trade fans, but the, the casual fans who want a night out, a big boxing night out in their city, in their town. And also, that's what's got to come through, which I think it does, the TalkSport YouTube audience. That's got to fly through the screen and, and, and make people want to come to the shows because the more people that get there and the more atmosphere, the more it sort of vibrates and, and gets back into the radio and the TVs and the broadcasting onto YouTube, whatever it is. That's what, that's what we said, Eddie and I said, years and years ago. It was taking it from the leisure centres into the arenas. And then Eddie took it into the stadiums yeah. um, with, with Wembley and Frotch Groves. But it was all about getting that feel. And I think they did it brilliantly on the darts, you know, to turn that into a happening so that you just want to be there. And if you're not there, you want to sort of, you feel like you are there by watching it and living it yeah. um, through the screen. So that's, that's what's important. It's making these shows memorable, making them that fans can go home and they feel yeah. like they've seen some of the superstars of the future, but they've also seen some great tear ups, yeah. some good scraps, and you know, and a couple of fights that go the other way. From one big name to another, in Billy Joe Saunders, I know he's been at a couple of your shows recently. Is there any sort of relationship with Billy there? I know he's keen on getting back in the ring. Could you possibly facilitate that? Yeah, listen, Billy's a good good friend. He's a, he's a, he's a genuine bloke who knows boxing. You know, I met Billy back in the days when he was amateur at the GB squad in Sheffield, so I've kept hold of his career. I think he's one of the most talented fighters this country's had. You know, maybe if, if is he going to come back? The thing with Billy Joe Saunders is come back, if he wants to come back, he'll come back. I know financially he's secured himself extremely well. He's invested well. So Billy Joe will come back if he wants to come back. That's, no good, to hear. That's good to hear. It's, 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 it's nice to see fighters like your Carl Frotch and your Billy Joe I, I love this story when I ask fighters, make sure you invest your money well. Because, you know, once you, your career's over as a fighter, that you, you have a missing void. The least thing you want is at least to be financially secure so you know you don't have to go out there and maybe fight again just for the sake of the money. And Billy Joe's look fortunate enough to be in that position where he doesn't need to box. But he's a great fan of ours and, and he's a massive... He's not just seen there's so many guys, your Cal Brook, your, you know... Yeah, your Ebony Bridges, Johnny Nelson, so many guys go on and on and on who support us. Jack Catchell, your Dalton Smith, you know, Josh Warrington, Lee Wood, they support us. And that what surprised me and really pleases me as a promoter, how much support we've had from the British boxing world. The fighters coming as well, Fight, and fighters, talking about it. Fighters, mm. promoters, managers. Yeah, we know we, we speak sometimes about a lot of negativity and a lot of like kind of cutthroat in this business, but me as a promoter, the support we've had from fighters across the broad at every level has been really humbling and appreciative. But Billy Joe has been one of them who's really supported us. And he, he said he's going to be there for the April 20th the coming, uh, coming of age show. So him, there's, there's loads of names. It goes on and on and on. This could, will be the most star-studded show we do with the best card we've done and hopefully the best fights we've done and all. So and it's, and it's great if it's attracting the, the, the fighters because they know they want to be at the shows. The, 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 the ones that have been in the ring or are in the ring, that's, that's where you, you learn when, when something's working, when they want to be around it. And uh, that's what I feel from, from GBM. And, and Izzy is not one of these guys who's going to say, look, Eddie earned this or Frank Warren or Ben Shalom that. He respects them all. And, and it's so he should because they've all done really, really well in their different ways and, and, and they've all got fantastic things going on. But concentrate on, on GBM shows, concentrate on what you can do to make these things special, to make fighters want to talk about it, to make fans 
thrilled about going to the next one you know take it around the country sure. and, and yeah. yeah and and it's not just selling tickets it's just it's it's the whole package isn't it making gbm and everywhere i go people are excited about it they're excited about gbm's journey is he surprised with the amount of support you've had in some ways because i know when new promoters come into the business it's not always that way sometimes speed bumps are thrown in the way and it's obviously a market where it's very competitive and people want to be at the top and they don't necessarily want people rising up to that top level. Are you surprised with the amount of support you've seen? Good, 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 good question. Uh, I'm surprised. Look, I, I know what I've signed up when I get into boxing promotion. Obviously, I've been around a lot of different businesses and people and situations and kind of, I know what I've signed up for. So I, I know the kind of, the darker sides of boxing promotion and there is a lot of it out there and the stigma that promoters and the boxing world always but I always try looking at things on a positive outlook and thinking support maybe that positivity is kind of reflected on these guys and have a lot of support. I am a surprise certain degree, yes, but I don't see I don't go out there, you'd never hear me trying to slag another promoter off, but that's not my style. You know, if I'm I'm one of them, I'd rather sit down and let's let's discuss it over a coffee or something, or let's go for a walk or something. Discuss it. I'm not really out there to go and slag anybody off. And and one of them factors is, I genuinely believe in our product. I genuinely believe we will be one of the biggest boxing promotion outfits in the country. Therefore, if you believe in your product so much and so convinced about what you do, it doesn't diminish me by talking ill of some other promoter or slagging somebody off. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Maybe they do stuff that I don't, the way I wouldn't do it. Maybe Eddie or Frank or Ben do stuff that way I wouldn't, but I do stuff the way they wouldn't. And it's just a choice of kind of, uh, kind of outlook how you do stuff. So, yeah, I'm surprised to a certain degree, but not on the other end. And also... Even if there wasn't as much support, I, I wouldn't change my kind of view on these guys. And I know you mentioned earlier on about is I wouldn't go on camera slagging anybody. I hope, I really hope, and I believe I, I wouldn't be that kind of promoter that's going to want to have a back and forth. I know sometimes it's done for numbers and then and, and clickbait and all that kind of yeah. stuff, bit of fun. And there's a bit of light banter towards it. Which and I Frank, understand. And Frank and Eddie stuff. Frank and Eddie. There's, great, no, it's not, there's no real hatred or right, a bit of rivalry. Obviously, we're rivals to a certain degree, but I'm hoping I could be that kind of promoter that just gets on with it, gets on with these guys, speaks the truth, you know, even if it's against myself, if we do make mistakes, put my hands up, we make mistakes, we're all human, listen. Be authentic, uh, yeah, be real. And, and we, I will make mistakes in this game, I understand that as long as I stay true to myself and the fighters and the people around me, and it's important that I have like you, Adam, you're not a yes man. Not if, I do something, if I do something wrong, I want people around me to say, Izzy, that's bullshit, you can't be doing that, that's wrong. And I want them real people, even from the youngest guys in our team. You know, Mitchell mm -hmm. was working. He's only, mm -hmm. what, 23, 24. He's bollocking me all the time for doing something if, if you don't feel it. And I want them. I don't want the yes man, even though I'm the CEO and I'm I'm the so-called the man in the business. I want my team to be, right, this is crap, is it? You can't go off like that. You can do this. Don't sign it. And you've got a great young team, a fantastic yeah. team around you. And, and you need that because yeah. you, you're going to make mistakes. And also... You mentioned about speed bumps. There are going to be many, many yeah. speed bumps, bumps, potholes, whatever you call them ahead. This is boxing. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, this isn't chess, but it is chess moves that you need okay. to succeed. So, yeah, look, it's uh, there's a very competitive market out there. Um, but what's attracted me to GBM uh, is easy. Is that uh, is that personality that um, that real? Uh, and I think it's authentic, and I think it's coming from someone who fought as well, who was in the ring. He was a cricketer as well. He's an athlete. He's been a businessman. He's he's had successes. He's had failures. But I think this is rolling in the right direction. And I think the key for Izzy is to listen, not just to 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 go it his way. He'll he'll have his ideas. But we've also got to make sure that our ideas are heard and that together we come up with a winning formula. And I think the people around GBM now, we, we, are, we are really confident that this is going to be a, a success story and that it's going to go from city to city or town to town, uh, up and down the country. And I think we're going to gather steam and gather real momentum. Um, and then I think the broadcasters are going to be sitting there going, we, we need them. We need GBM, not the other way around. Adam, you mentioned earlier about Izzy, the fact that he, he looks up to these great promoters of the UK scene, the likes of the Eddies and the Frank Warrens. When you look at the qualities that Izzy's got, are there any any that you can sort of say that are shared between the two? Yeah, actually. I mean, obviously, I worked very, very closely with Eddie for, for, for many, many years. So I guess that's that's the, the partnership that I, I, I had the, the, the best relationship with. We spoke four or five times a day. It was uh, incredible. And, and, and some, you know, some 
tough conversations as well. But mostly we were we were on the same wavelength because we wanted to tell stories and we wanted to to, to drive numbers and, and take risks, I guess. But uh, I think of um, of all the promoters I've sort of come across, I think I think Izzy's got a bit of that young Eddie about him. Um, I think you know when Eddie sort of came onto the scene. Um, he was he did, he'd done some golf, he'd done some poker, but his heart was in boxing and he was really passionate about it. And I think he was really out to prove not just to to the world, but to his dad and his family as well, that he could really do something and, and look at the success he's achieved. And Barry now looks up to Eddie as the, the sort of main promoter and, and he doesn't stop. I mean, he was in Vegas last weekend, he's in Manchester this weekend. You know, him and Frank are a, f- a fantastic team. You know, like Frank and George, you know, like Ben and Baz, you know, like Callow and Nissa, they, they've all got their relationships and, and their, and their, and their positivity. Uh, positive stuff as well as as he said that everyone's got their way of doing things but I think for me if there was one I could compare Izzy to it is a bit like a young Eddie it's that sort of passion and the fact that he can speak without a script it's all from here and and I yeah I like it I like him a lot and I think that he's uh he when I talk to people about Izzy who've, who've heard him speak they all go I like him there's something about him right and I think that it's it's refreshing it's um it's it's maybe it's like cyclical boxing is cyclical maybe it is like a a a sort of you know like a eddie was when when he started out but i think izzy as well has got you know that that success of businesses behind him you know he's uh matron was already a a very successful business you know when eddie came into it he's just added more spice and, and 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 more to it with the darts the snooker the boxing but izzy's you know what people don't know is his story you know he's worked really hard in lots of different businesses he's a he's a very successful businessman as well as being a former athlete and now his passion which i think it always has been burning inside him is to be you know a great promoter so i think he's got all the ingredients and i think he's got the humility as well and i think he's got that authentic bit um and he's got the the, 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 the cheeky, chappy, chirpy stuff as well. So I think there's uh, there's a lot in I'm, there. I'm going to show all you for that, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really enjoying, listen, I'm really enjoying working with him. And I, I think it's going to be really good fun. And uh, we, just, we just try having a laugh, don't we, Adam? We, we, it's, it's hard work. It's serious. It's but... not a serious golfer, but we we'll try enjoying it, not getting that too carried away. And, and, and like I said, I keep saying... It's a testament to our team because you know you see maybe me on the front and now Adam, but there's a lot of stuff here goes, a lot of work goes non-stop day and Absolutely. night stresses to make sure things go right. We've got a big team, and I keep saying, I keep saying it, uh, we'll be one of the strongest teams in the country, and it won't take long for that to happen. And then obviously, all the stuff will fall in place. But yeah, we're excited for the future. We've got a cracking card on April 20th, the best card we've done. Two, t- three title fights on the line, Huey Fury on Kieran Malloy, it goes on and on on the list. April 20th coming of age is, is a show that I'm really looking forward to. And, you know, let, let's go. Let's, let's, let, let's roll the dice now. Teamwork, communication, quality, fun, adventure, um, taking some risks, learning from mistakes. It's all ahead of us and uh, it's going to be very, very exciting. Izzy, Adam, it's a real pleasure to chat to you this afternoon. Uh, best of luck when the show rolls around in, rolls around in a week Saturday. Thank you very much. Thanks.